Hello everyone, welcome to yet another video about Gypsy Jazz Guitar. Before I forget, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give the video a like, if you like it, because that helps me out a bunch. So, um, this is another video about improvisation in the Gypsy Jazz style, but it's also just jazz, because Gypsy Jazz in the end is just jazz. It uses some other instruments, but the concepts are more or less the same. So this is a concept I came up with um, some time ago, which I call, well, I used to call it using cells, but now I have found that that is confusing. So I've changed the name to the concept of using starters. And it is a very nice concept, especially for people that are looking for a good entry point into jazz improvisation. Because uh, if you would ask most accomplished jazz musicians, how do you learn how to improvise, they probably say something like you have to transcribe solos by the masters, you have to, um, or you can use a book with patterns and you just have to apply those, the phrases that you find in the transcribed solos or in the books over different sets of changes. And then, you know, they might come out when you start improvising on a gig. And that is true. I've done that a lot and it's very helpful, but, uh, there's one little thing that they're not saying is that it is actually very difficult to practice a, a new phrase, something that is completely foreign to you that you've never actually played before. And then to actually apply that yourself uh, during a jazz solo while trying to be creative and being free is very difficult. I mean, I've studied many phrases that I forgot or that I practiced that I thought I knew, but then I never played them. So to kind of, avoid this, although it's not completely avoidable, I came up with this concept I call starters. And it is actually a very, very simple concept. It's, I take a little phrase that is a starter, that I that is very simple, very easy to remember. And then I try to find phrases that connect to that starter phrase, uh, which makes the phrase completely new, right? So for this example, I've chosen a 2-5-1 in B-flat. So C minor 7, F7, or F7 altered, whatever you want, to B-flat major six, uh, 7, or B-flat 6. So one, so one bar C minor 7, one bar F7, two bars B-flat 6. And then I've I, I know many of these starters, and I will go into detail about the starters, by the way, during uh, the workshops in Los Angeles, during my Gypsy Jazz Summit, Christian, Christian van Heemert's Gypsy Jazz Summit, hosted by Tommy Davey of JangoGuitars.com, which will take place February 18th to uh, 21st. There are still tickets available, I think, but it's limited, so... If you want to join these workshops, please do, and we'll go deep into the concept of starters, but I've now picked some for you and I will want to show you the possibilities. So, one of the starters I use to play on a 2-5-1 in B flat, but you can use the starters, of course, on any set of sets of changes you want. You just have to find the starter. But the first starter I would use maybe is this one. And it comes from a, a 2-5-1 I transcribed by Charlie Parker and the whole thing uh, goes like this, one, two, three. So it's, it's a nice lick, you can play that. But I picked the first three notes, or the first phrase, actually it's not the first three notes, it's more notes. I picked this as my starter. So I play that over C minor, and I can I can start uh, the same way that Charlie Parker starts before the, the bar, before the one, or I can start. That doesn't really matter because it's just about these, this particular phrase uh, and the where I started is not important. Just start it on the beat. So I'm here, now I try to find a phrase on F7 or C minor F7 that would resolve to B flat. So one of the things I could do, for instance, is play the bebop scale that I, I talked about in the last video. So I know I end on an A, so then I have to find the bebop scale on F7 going down, so it would be here. Let's try that. Or 
or you know, maybe I could put a triplet in there. Uh, let's try something else. Maybe I could play some kind of altered phrase with a flat nine. Or maybe with a with a sharp nine. Maybe I could go up. Uh, maybe I could play a diminished arpeggio down. Well, you know, you can come up with with lots of, with lots of stuff. So what I do is, uh, I, I I don't do a backing track at first, but I, I play this starter, and I just search for things that sound nice. Of course, I have things under my fingers that connect to it. And then I put on a loop and I just start fiddling around, always starting with the starter, not at the same place, maybe start before the bar, start on the bar, start late, early, just experiment and see what I can come up with. Okay, so that's a clear concept. Let's look at another start I have. Another start I have is this one. It's just a E flat major seven uh, arpeggio. And I can play it like this or I can play it like this. All right, so then, Let's look at some phrases. It, it comes from this uh, phrase that I transcribed, I don't know by who, it goes like this. That's the whole 251. But I just took the first four notes as my starter. And then I find stuff like maybe, or, or, or that's the original lick actually. Mm. See, now I have, I have this phrase, very nice. That's another lick I transcribed, and I connected it to the starter, and I can see, you know, maybe I can connect this phrase to my other starter. I have, I have the same phrase connected to two starters, like this. And so the big advantage is because I know these starters very well. New things I discover are easy to connect to these starters because I just approach the new things with my uh, very familiar starters. Now, another starter would be something like this. One, two, three. Let's connect it to uh, the bebop scale. Let's connect it to the the phrase with the flat nine and the sharp nine. Or let's connect it to the, the start, to this one. Right, it's, it's, it's a big jump, but it would work. Or let's connect it to a diminished arpeggio. Okay, and the fourth starter I was using is this one comes from a lick, it comes actually from the, the bebop scale, like this. Yeah. Right, so, but I took the first three notes as a starter. Let's connect it to, um, you know, the, the, the first lick. Let's connect it to that. Let's connect it to this one. Let's connect it just to a bebop scale going down. Let's connect it to the phrase with a sharp nine and a flat nine. So the way I find these phrases is not just purely by theory. Uh, I, I also use my ears and see what sounds nice. And I do this experimentation also with the backing track, so I can immediately check if it sounds great. So I'm gonna do it a little bit again. I'm gonna play, uh, improvise a little bit over a two, five, one in B flat using four starters. This one, this one, or this one, and this one. So it's four starters. 
I try to play this phrase, connecting to all starters, and let's see what happens. And um, yeah, let's go. Loop. You see, you can get very creative. Sometimes things go wrong, but this is the, um, the adventure you go on when you try to improvise. But I always have this solid starting point, these starters, to help me when I get lost, because I can always go back to the starters. I was even connecting, connecting several starters in a row. You can do that too. Of course, take a slower tempo and, uh, and take your time and really listen to yourself. Maybe record yourself, listen back, see what works. And now every time you start transcribing, Always think about your starters. Can I connect them in some way to one or several starters? So again, during my workshop, I have a whole sheet with these starters, but you can easily find them yourself by just transcribing uh, a phrase uh, on a 251 or just on a minor chord or you know in a certain mode, doesn't matter. Take the first few notes or the first idea as a starter and start connecting other ideas you know or you transcribe, or that you just find by experimenting. Okay, I hope you enjoy uh, this tip. Uh, give it a try and um, let's see how it works for you. Let me know in the comments how it works for you. If you want to know more information about the workshops, because I have another one in Amsterdam on January 27th during Robin Nolan's uh, Django Amsterdam Festival. If you want to know more information about that, check under the video. Okay, bye.